G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Fire pumps are a versatile and essential tool on any farm, no matter how big. Whether it be for keeping plants alive on a 36 degree day like this, tamping down your occasional burn off, cleaning up and changing water in troughs, regardless of your use for them, you need to have one of these things. Calling them a fire pump is really selling them short. They're a versatile tool, a bit like a Swiss army knife. And that brings us to purchasing one. There's a range of options out there, whether it be plastic, metal, single impeller, twin impeller. There's all sorts of different heads of pumps, pressure ratings, and even hose choices and fittings. Getting the right pump is essential, particularly if you're thinking of using it in emergency situations. You don't want to have leaking loose fittings or hoses that easily crimp and restrict flow. Then we'll get into servicing tips so you can be assured your pump starts first time, every time. Today we're going to go and visit the boys at Century Rain and I'm going to have a chat to Rob about all the different types of pumps on the market and get an idea of which types of pump suit which application. I hope you enjoy this. My favourite plumbing people who got me out of trouble on a number of occasions. Today I'm hoping you can do us a favour. I've had a couple of subscribers ask about fire pumps because there's a million models out there. How to choose between them, what you should get for different situations, how to set them up and then I think it's really important we talk about how to maintain them because that's one piece of equipment you want to, you want it to work maybe once every 10 years but it better work. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so have you got some out the back we can have a look at and go through a few features of? Yep, sure. Okay. A few to have a look at. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, Rob, well, first up, before we have a look at servicing and looking after pumps, we better find out what we're buying. Now, there's a bit of a range here, and there's a range in price, isn't there? There is a range in price, yeah, absolutely. If I'm at the budget end, and I've just got a little hobby farm, and I'm looking for one of these little puppies here, what sort of performance can I expect out of the pump? Well, this pump here will give you a head of 24 metres. Okay. So you're limited to the height up to 24 metres of spraying if you've got tall trees. So head is how far up, up. the pump will spray, the yeah. pressure. That's how correct. How high it will go. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So 24 metres up. It's still yep. a long way. It absolutely is. Yeah. And that's ideal for the back of a little fire trailer or something Perfect. like that. Perfect. Yep. Running off yep. a little IBC or something like that would be, would be ideal. Yeah. So what's the reliability of these things like, seeing they're all Chinese made? The reliability is fairly good. I mean, we've had none of these come back. Yeah. Um, but we do have an importance in service. Keep it serviced, keep it yeah, running, yeah. test it out of season, test it in, uh, a couple of times a year, let it run, let it perform. So we're going to talk to Greg about that a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. um, and that goes for all of these pumps. But as long as you keep these things serviced, and you Absolutely. bear in mind that they have a limited performance, mm -hmm. they're ideal just for looking after your little burn offs and things like that, yep. then they're a useful tool. Absolutely, very useful tool. So just under 400 bucks for that little guy. That's correct. There's a big jump up to this one, isn't there? It's what almost double in almost price, double. but you're getting double performance. Okay, so what's the head on this one? The head on this one's 62 metres from memory. So any tall stuff, trees, building, whatever you want to do, it's going to spray. Yeah, and knowing the capacity of the pump's important, you don't you don't buy a little pump like this and think, well, I'm always going to be spraying 20 metres up in the air, do you? No, that's right. When looking at data on pumps, there's two important things. You've got your flow and you've got your head. Your head is how high you can spray and you want to be somewhere in between. Somewhere in the middle there it would be for longevity would be the perfect place to be. Now I also notice that there's a bit of a difference with the outlet manifold on these two. With this one you've only got a single option, one direction. Yep. Um, with this one here you've got two smaller and one larger outlet manifold. That's correct. Yep. Gives you a little bit more flexibility there. Absolutely. Yep. So the next one, mate, goes up about a hundred bucks only. So we've we've gone from four hundred to double that eight hundred, and now we're at nine hundred. What do we get for nine hundred? Nine hundred, you get a Honda engine. Okay, as opposed to Chinese. As opposed to Chinese, that's correct. Um, Chinese wet in, but assembled in Australia. Yep. Okay. And performance is the same, sixty-two meters. So you're still getting exactly the same performance. Pay a little pump, bit more for the Honda engine. More for the name. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Now we get to something that's more locally made. We're going up to the Onga one. That's right. And there are other locally made fire pumps as well. There are, there is. This one here is a single impeller Onga pump. Yep. Um, and obviously the difference here is Australian made. Australian made, Honda motor, Australian made, Australian assembled. It's just a good pump. 
Uh, but the performance statistics are about the same. Absolutely, they? yeah. So the all and the pressure is all around That's right. Yep. You're just getting a pump where you can know that you can go into a shop and you'll be able to get bits and pieces and bearings and it's more reasonable. Very much so, yep. Now speaking of fittings, Rob, um, sometimes pumps are used under a fair bit of pressure. Absolutely. And um, high pressure situations. Obviously, ideally, you should have them set up before you're in a high pressure situation, mm -hmm. but it will happen from time to time. There are some fittings you can get to make assembly a lot faster and easier. Absolutely. So and can you talk me through yeah, these? Yes, these are cam lock fittings. Yep. And they're a quick release, quick, quick assemble. You'd have your suction hose on this. Yes. Get your water source, straight in, clipped up, ready to go. That's it. That is fantastic. Now, they're not a huge investment, are they? No, 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 they're under 10 bucks. Around 10 bucks, five to 15 bucks. I'm gonna get some of those for my pump before I leave because there's nothing more annoying than trying to screw on a little plastic oh. fitting and you cross-thread it. Go on to the dose. And if you're shaking and you've got adrenaline going, yep. this is the way to go. And a lot of the time, if you need to use these things, it will be in a high stress time. Now, suction, that's something I wanna to talk to you about as well. Your suction pipe shouldn't be too long, should it? As short as you can keep it. If you're throwing it into a dam or a water source, yep. um, ideally if you've got a IBC, one of those square thousand yes. litre tanks, they're perfect set up in the back of a trailer. But if you've got to use, throw a suction line down into a water source, yep. try and keep it as short as you can. So a metre or two if possible? Oh yeah, yeah. Look, it, you can throw it up to about four or five metres, yep. but once again, shorter the better. What's the reason for that? Why do people have trouble with long suction lines? Easier to prime, quicker to prime. Yep. Less things can go wrong with it. Um, the pump's not working as hard to draw the water. Yep. All sorts of things like that. Yeah. Okay, so big tip there when you're buying your fire pump, make sure you buy one that you can move to the water source. Yep. So that's good learning on the pumps and you really do get what you pay for. Absolutely. In terms of yep. flow and performance. Yep. Um, so we've got to be careful. If we're only going to spend $400, we've got to understand we're only getting a low capacity pump. Um, and I love these cam locks. I'm going to walk out of here with a set for myself. I notice you've also got a hose reel here. What's the damage on something like a hose reel and why should we consider getting one? Consider getting one of these you could, uh, to be fixed into the back of a trailer or a ute or whatever it is or with one of those IBC tanks. Yep. Cost of one of these under 400 bucks. Right. Um, but money well spent. And for that, you're getting a few extra metres of hose, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, 36 metres of hose, um, and it's, it's just a, a good, safe bet. The last thing you want to be doing is dragging too many big hoses or long hoses through paddocks or whatever yep. you're doing once it's full of water. I do notice that all of the fire pumps that you've been showing to me are all aluminium in the wet end. Yes. You wouldn't recommend any plastic, plastic components no. in any pumps? No, because there's, there's every chance you're going to use this in an emergency situation. Yep. And the last thing you'd want to be a wet end cracking or um, breaking or snapping, a fitting snapping or anything like that. So yep. I would definitely suggest aluminium or metal. Now let's go and bother Greg, find out how to start one of these things first pop every time and the things that you should check before you do that and then how to look after them and service them so that they're ready to go. Let's go and annoy Greg. Let's go and torture him. Let's do it. Now, of course, all of the pumps that we'd seen in the shop so far were single impeller pumps, and the limit of those is around about 60 to 70 metres of head. If you really need a forceful pump that can push water a long way, then you're into the territory of the twin impeller. Greg had one out the back that can go just over 100 metres, so he took me out to have a look at the startup procedure for any pump and to give a high pressure pump a bit of a run. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is check the oil. And on these little fire pumps, you don't get much rigor oil. So, I'll clean that. I always screw it all the way in. Cause if it's got no oil in it, it won't start. If it's got too much oil in it, it'll cause other problems. So this is a little bit low, should be about there with the, the dipstick fully screwed in. So that's our first important point, isn't it? Um, a lot of people these days will just fill the oil up into this hole until it starts to weep out, and they think that's the full level. Mm. That's too full. That's right. With these little motors, especially being thrown around in the back of a ute, yep. you can't have too much oil in them because yep. it'll, um, it'll cause hydraulic lock in the motor. You yep. won't be able to pull start it. Now these fire pumps are made to be really simple to start. Let's yep. just go through the startup process, and then I'd love to have a play with squirting something. Yeah, good. We'll turn the little on and off switch on. Make sure your fuel is on, which it is. Now I've started this, so we probably won't need choke, and that's our throttle. So 
So all I have to do is pull start it and it should go. We'll fix it. Before you drain the engine oil, it's always important to run the motor for five minutes or so to warm the oil up. Then when it's warm, have a little tray under here, undo this drain plug and let the oil drain out into your tray. I won't take it all the way out. To refill it, you fill it through this little filler plug here. Uh, you might need a nice skinny little funnel and uh, uh, these probably take roughly about a litre of oil. Okay, now we're cleaning the air cleaner. So I'm un unscrewing the wing nut at the top of the air cleaner cover. Pull the air cleaner cover off. And this is the air cleaner inside here. Normally there's a little nut, wing nut inside, but we, we already got that off. We take the air cleaner off to be cleaned. It's two components, a, a foam cover which normally gets fairly oily. I wash that out in petrol and let it dry. And this is the air cleaner. This stops dirt getting in through into the carving and into the motor. So you blow that out with an air nozzle from the inside out. You don't put the air nozzle in with too great a pressure or you'll blow a hole in it and it'll hurt the air cleaner. Um, but that's all that's required. If you're using it regularly, I'll do it once a month. The next maintenance job you can do is clean the spark plug. So you pull off the, the spark plug lead, uh, undo the spark plug. Now this one's brand new so it looks really clean but your spark happens between those two points there so that needs to be cleaned. So you can clean that with a wire brush and also you can open the gap and clean it with a little file as long as you've got a feeler gauge to um, reset it. The gap should be set to 35 thou. When you're putting your spark plug back, this is hard steel, that's aluminium. You've got to be very careful not to cross thread. If it doesn't go in easily, don't force it, just undo it and start it again. The other thing is when you're tightening them up, don't over tighten them, just nip it up. You can drain the fuel a couple of ways. You can run it down in the tank and just run it until it shuts off. That's a good way of doing it because you, you drain all the fuel out of the carby as well. The other way, now this is a little bit difficult. Some motors have a fuel line connected to the, um, the carby that's easier to get to. This one hasn't. So we put the fuel line on around the side and we undo this bleed port at the bottom of the fuel bowl and drain it into a cup or a container. Greg, thanks very much, mate. You've taken us through an amazing amount of information about fire pumps. People should now have a little bit more knowledge mm. about what they're choosing and what's on the marketplace. And you do get what you pay for after all. Um, but knowing how far you've got to go in that scale of what you pay for is important. And I think also the message about servicing pumps is important, isn't it? Yeah. I think as long as you, if you, it doesn't matter what pump you buy, if it's a reasonable quality pump, if you look after it, they'll last you a lot of years. Well, we've had some great tips on how to look after it. Hopefully people just come in and buy pumps from you and don't bother you with silly issues <laughs> like old fuel. Thank you. Good on you, mate. I really Thanks appreciate you. it. Good on you. Guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more on timthompson.ag. We'll see you next week.